So, last year I did this thing where I showed off the tiny shittiness that was my room, not as a cry for help or because I wanted pity, but actually really only so that I could contrast it this year by being all like, You house motherfuckers! But that didn't really happen, or at least not in time. I'll be moving in January, so the year did get a happy end for me, just not one I can flex within video. So, yeah. Welcome to the Thor High Heels 2018 Game Awards! Thank you, thank you! <laughs> another year, another batch of new video games for us to love, cherish and appreciate, but also spend inappropriate amounts of money on. <laughs> I, however, have only played three, and the nominees are... Metal Gear Survive The Missing the 25th Ward. And uh, the winner is... The 25th Ward! I think that this may very well be my favorite game of all time. <laughs> Not even joking. Suda's classic, dark, edgy, sarcastic, postmodern storytelling has always resonated within me ever since I played Killer7, but with it and the other games in his Kill the Past subseries, there would always be something holding it back. With K7 itself, for example, I didn't quite like how incomprehensibly vague the storytelling was, creating some thick layers of distance between you, its characters, and any and all plot. So then, when Flower, Sun, and Rain fell into my lap, I automatically resonated with it more, given that it had most of the same elements that really fimbled my bimble, but with a more down-to-moon narrative, and people who also wouldn't die seconds after being introduced. However, the gameplay sucked fuck. Like, really bad. Like, it, it's built around math bad. L like, homework bad. Which is where the silver case came in. Once again, it had the stuff, even more of the funky visuals, and none of that pesky gameplay ruining the fun. The style, the music, the characters, the storytelling, the themes, and just the overall dark humorous tone were all spot the fuck on. Except for it also being a bit samey and deeply repetitive due to how low budge and tiny team things were, though none of that really held it back for me at all. I was just about convinced that nothing would ever come along to top it even. And then it got a sequel. Who knew that all it would take to win me over was just a prettier UI, some dubby house music and intense existentialism. Cause yeah, this game fucked me up fam. I got into this way deeper than anyone else has in my review, but just to buzz it up here, the 25th Ward is like Metal Gear Solid 2's ending the game. Its reality is really fickle, but presented in a manner that's very direct and hard to fully misinterpret, while at the same time successfully keeping its distance, letting you observe and relate, but never fully immerse, forever remaining the characterless observer, seeing as that you don't play as any one person per se. At the same time, set playing feels almost like this ironic sardonic parody of the Japanese PC RPG game, with tropes, dungeons and battles being twisted and turned right upside down, servicing only to showcase how fucked up the entire main cast is. Living in a totalitarian city where everyone is a type of genome clone of a legendary serial killer. And, <laughs> you know, that sounds dumb and Kingdom Hearts solid as fuck, but it's not, given the severely existential headspaces it allows the narrative to get into relating to things like bots, online prostitution, murder, video games, politics, sexuality, the regulation of all of those things, hacking, authority, the loss thereof and the abuse of which, and also our personalities and identities and how other influence those and how we proceed to present them under the pressures of all of the above. It is deep, progressive, transgressive, and watch my review to find out more. The 25th Ward feels like it was made for me. I'd say something stupid like, this is exactly the type of game that I would make, but it, it's not. If only just because I know that some of you would think that and also because I'd like my stories to be a bit more upbeat. Basically, what I'm saying is that I would rip off Sing rather than Suda. Though either way, this game inspires me something fierce, in ways that I can explain, but won't, because I want to save that for another video and also would take ages.
Video games aren't always about video games. Sometimes they're about music. And so here to announce our next category is special celebrity guest 6 9 Boom. It's like I don't even like boom. No, I mean, boom. Wow, <laughs> such inspiring words. This man fucked a child. Yeah, let you nice hand. Boom. Category: Best soundtrack. The Quiet Man. The world ends with you. Bad smartphone port edition. The Quiet Man. And the winner is. Boom, the quiet man. Okay, now get that pedophile off my stage. Welcome to the show, it's Shigeru Miyamoto. Um, if, if you could just, like, get out from the shadow. Silence, you insolent worm. You will all kneel before me. The great Miyamoto, inventor of Zelda, and destroyer of Paper Mario, here to give you a trailer. We all love some great Nintendo classics. Whether if it's Mario Land on the Game Boy, or Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy. Well, get ready to experience those titles again. Introducing the Game Boy Mini, a Game Boy that is so small you can't see or control a single thing. Thought the original screen sucked? Try looking at it through a magnifying glass. Oh wait, <laughs> you already were. It comes preloaded with five games. Available now for only $9.99.99999. Um, wow. Okay. Um, anyway, here to announce our most popular game award, it's Will Smith! Fortnite. YouTube Rewind 2018 is now the most disliked video ever. The corporate soulless company that everyone pretends to know shit about despite not being Indian and thus lacking any and all cultural or personal context T-Series went head to head with the ever controversial PewDiePie. And the entire YouTube year was kicked off by Mr. Totally Not Balding Haircut himself filming an actual fucking corpse. None of that being what I want to discuss though. Last year I did a YouTube segment where I mostly just went over some of my favorite vids and newly found channels, which for this year would be Sarah Z, Wild Potato, Eric Taxon, Butterbuns, Rockcock64, and DF Retro. And I also brought up the state of my channel a little bit, which per my standards at least is currently pretty fucking great. I was hoping to hit 10k by the end of the year, but it seems I'm already close to hitting 20. And even then I'd say that all of the nice comments and in-jokes and frequent names and faces in my comment section are just a bit more better. This year, however, I only want to talk about one single event that happened on the site. One that's pretty fucking integral to my channel and given the types of videos that I make, no doubt too many of you too. I am, of course, referring to the best friends done broke. There's a lot to be said here about parasocial relationships and about not getting too invested into people you don't really know, but when you watch a channel daily for what at this point is well over five years, it's hard not to feel feelings when that channel ends, due to those running it just not really getting along anymore. And yeah, for sure, friendships fizzle out and especially when business gets involved. And I respect that and I ain't gonna speculate it, it's fine. But when I sat there thinking about it on the day that they announced the breakup, I kind of began to realize how big of a deal their videos were to me. Besides just being daily entertainment, so many of the things that I hold dearly today like Jojo, Yakuza, weird low budget video games, memeable anime titties, dumb fighting games, survival fucking horror, and just a strong general appreciation for video games overall are all things that I've mostly entirely found through them. 
or <laughs> I mean the flames for this were already going within me absolutely but seeing Pat getting more than passionately angry over tank controls Matt and Wooly screaming their lungs out over a certain boy walking on screen Liam happily soaking in the Tamsoft dumpster fire vibes and all of them frequently referencing the Jojo's Yakuza obscure lore thingies from loads of other pop culture relics becoming funny without their proper context in the process just fosters this communal sense of bondage over stupid bullshit that cast a hefty dose of fuel over said flames. And given the amount of people that they've influenced over the years, I think it's safe to say that I wasn't alone on that. My channel, for one, wouldn't be half of what it is now if it wasn't for them, and I literally can't thank them enough, if not for just, as cliche as it sounds, getting me through some less than stellar times. I. I don't talk about this much on here and considering that it's going to end soon with me moving away anyway. I'm gonna spare the details, but there's too many cases where I can quite vividly remember feeling like absolute dog ass and then having their content serving as one hell of a distraction, often straight up cheering me up despite everything. And additionally, the types of games that they play and how they would talk about them, positively or negatively, has given me the inspiration to write many times as well. <laughs> Seriously, it's no coincidence that my Police Knots review came out during their LP, and that, in and of itself, is such a huge bit of productive escapism. And so, to me, it's not just my favorite channel dying, but it's also an end of an era, in a way. New house, no more negative vibes, and I guess also no more best friends. Gonna have to find someone else to rip off now. And now, a word from our sponsor. Wagwan family, it is I, Tariq, here to tell you about this brand new album, mixtape, playlist, experience, by Adolf Nomura. Not Hitler, a very unfortunate name indeed. In either case, Tariq also features on this album, showing off songs like the very one you're hearing right now. Bless up, one love, one god, one, Tariq. Available now on Spotify, Bandcamp, Google Play, YouTube, Tidal, and probably some other ones. Physicality not included. And with that, her game show draws to a close. I would like to thank everyone who's watched, liked, commented, subscribed, and Patreoned over the years. Even though <laughs> I'm a massive narcissist doing this all for my own sake, it still means a lot that y'all would gravitate towards my shit so much. Here's to a happy 2019. Brought to you by Star Wars Battlefront 3. Even though you don't want it, you'll still buy it. Ah!